Okay, guys, um, I'm new to this and I haven't heard about HPC certification activities uh, before that. So uh, this is a presentation of who we are, what we're doing, and uh, what we're specifically doing in a, in a project. And it's not as detailed as, as what we have heard in, in the first two talks, but it's rather uh, similar to what uh, Bernd was talking about. So um, a short roadmap, I'll talk about HLRS, why training and education, uh, the way we do it in science and uh, how we are going to move into industrial training and a uh, quick summary. Um, don't worry if I'm fast, you will get a copy of the slides so you can go through all the details afterwards. So HLRS is a center to provide computational science and engineering. Um, we are obviously in charge of research. Uh, we have a focus on engineering, global system science and digital humanities and that is also also driving our educational and, and training activities. Uh, but as a center, we also provide uh, all kinds of services and support the industry, especially uh, selling CPU time to about 65 companies, mainly in the region of uh, the state of Baden-Württemberg. And we have uh, decided to also work together with society and politics. Um, that's why uh, we are currently running simulations uh, for the pandemia or pandemic um, predictions for the federal German government. Uh, that comes with the politics. When you work with politicians, they know what you're doing. Okay, we are running a large scale system, which is not fully installed yet uh, and is currently um, deeply impacted by uh, coronavirus because in the middle of an installation, no technical guys were allowed to fly anymore. So. No, that's not really funny. Okay, why do we do training in education? Well, mainly, uh, first of all, as everybody says, we want to get the best from our systems for the users. Um, we want to make sure that our systems are used in the best way because otherwise it's a waste of money. And we want to train people to work for us because uh, from the educational system that we have here, at least in Germany, and I don't think it's much better in the rest of Europe, you don't get to see many people who understand computers and understand supercomputers and understand simulation, which is uh, what we need. Um, but we also need to train people to work for our industrial partners because everybody in this area is looking for simulation experts. And as I said, there is very little training in that field. So what do we do in science? Well, this is a well-established program. I just show you what we did last year in 2019 because it's somewhat representative for what we're doing. You see something like 20, 25 courses, most of them at HRS, some of them at uh, Garching, so that's LR set in, in, in Munich, and uh, you see Dresden, and you see the University of Siegen, and yeah, you see Ulich because we do this in collaboration with the other two centers from the Gauss Center of Supercomputing in Jülich and in Garching. And you see that we have grown this program over the last like 20 years or so. Um, originally, we started with short courses, uh, which was like two hours training for our local users. Uh, but having become a national center in 1996, we had to improve that. And we found that uh, one week is um, sort of the best uh, length for such a workshop to train people. Now, you don't have to understand these details. Um, if, if you get the slides, just look into them and you will understand what's happening here. Okay, you see that we are currently at about uh, 1,000 participants and then there is something like uh, 40 or 35 uh, from industry. So that's good, but it's not good enough. And, and we saw a, a decrease in number of participants in 2019 because we had to sort of shift some of the workshops uh, and unfortunately, Corona killed also these workshops then. Okay, so why do we do industrial training? Well, the idea is simple. Uh, what we see is that there is a lack of HPC and especially simulation experts uh, in the industrial base that surrounds our center, the industrial base that's uh, Mercedes, uh, that's Bosch, that's Porsche. And that is some small and medium-sized enterprises, the bigger ones of them, 10,000 uh, people working for them, and the smaller ones, like 10 to 50 people working for them. So uh, there is about, um, I would say, like 500,000 people working in the region of Stuttgart that uh, are somehow related to simulation. So we set up this project, which we called MÖVE, and it's funded by the European uh, Social Fund, which is somewhat strange because the European Social Fund typically uh, does not invest in science, but they did understand that if you want to train people to then work in industry, it, it makes sense uh, to invest some money here. 
Uh, so what we what we did is uh, we founded what we call the Supercomputing Academy. Um, it's in German here, but don't worry, Academy in German is the same as Academy in English. Uh, and the purpose is uh, to do in-service training. And in-service training means that we want to train people who keep working. Yeah. So the target audience is people who work in industry. And there is a very simple reason for that. The one is, I already mentioned, that there is a lack of training in this field at our universities. And the second is that there is a lack of young people in that field. And the lack of young people in the field makes it rather difficult for the large companies to hire enough clever people. So what they are looking at is something which is very strange for the German companies. They are looking at their 45 age, 50 years age people and say, okay, they could learn some new tricks even though they are all the dogs. Uh, this is unusual in Germany. It's more normal in the US and in some other countries. But in Germany, you, you get hired by a large company and you stay there for the rest of your life until you retire and uh, they do not invest too much into training, but they figure they have to because there is not enough young workforce to replace their old people. The curriculum is done using blended learning and I'll say a few words. Uh, we are leading this, but we hired some people from the University of Ulm and Freiburg and a commercial company to support us in this activity and the project will last until December. Now, what do we do is uh, we decided to create eight modules uh, and we decided to do uh, two modules each for three different groups because we figured that there is the HPC administrators, the people who have to run the systems. There is the HPC users, the people who actually use simulation and visualization. And there is the HPC developers, the people who actually touch the code. Um, in science, there might be a little difference, although uh, the administrators usually are not experts uh, in simulations, but the, it's more easy to find someone who runs a system, runs a program and writes that program in science. In industry, these three fields are, at least in Germany, uh, entirely separated. There is a very, very small number of large companies that still uh, write their own codes. Um, so it is rather tricky to find these people. Uh, and then we have two modules that we're using here uh, to get the HPC basics across and also the topic of data, big data and, and data management. When you put all of this together, then you get uh, for each of the modules, the blended learning approach, which is we, we have a, at the beginning, we have uh, a meeting at HLRS. Then for the next 10 to 14 weeks, we have uh, what we call weekly virtual seminars. Uh, so we expect everybody to spend something like 10 hours working on these seminars. And then in the end, uh, we still have one day at Stuttgart where everybody comes together. Um, and then uh, we talk about certificates. Yeah, uh, All of these guys from industry would love to get certificates. So some of them are happy with a certificate of participation. So if they attend the virtual seminars and complete the online courses, then everything is fine. Uh, but some of them require a certificate of being successful. So they have then to get the certificate of participation and uh, in the end pass an exam that relates to the contents of the module. Uh, and this is what we have seen so far. So we have done five courses so far, or five modules so far. The number of participants is in the range that we expect. So somewhere between 10 and 20, which is good because that allows us to be more productive. Uh, certificate of participation, that's okay. It goes to something like 50% to 90%. Yeah. You have a dropout rate if, if people uh, have to do this as a side business sort of uh, in their company. And the number of certificates is done somewhere between one third and uh, up to 76%, which is also okay. Yeah. So we're happy with that. Now let me summarize briefly because otherwise I'm running out of time. Um, training is a permanent exercise for a center like ours. Uh, we, we have to work on that. We, we cannot assume that anyone is going to help us with that. We give lectures at the university. There is a, a special um, study course on simulation technology, very theoretical, very much uh, driven by mathematicians and computer scientists, so people who don't care too much about the applications. Uh, and we work with uh, the mechanical engineering faculties. Uh, that is great, but uh, technology is moving fast and methods are moving fast and algorithms are moving fast. So we think that training is something which an HPC center will always have to do. 
University training, as I said, is not sufficient. It's not sufficient because it's way behind what technology actually can do. That's the first problem that universities have. They are too slow, they are too old. Um, and the other problem is that universities are like theories. Um, don't worry, I'm, I'm a full professor at University of Stuttgart. So when, when I say nasty things about my profession, then uh, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, university uh, don't like the speed at which HPC is going. Uh, training scientists is where we all are good at. So uh, it's the whole staff of HLRS that goes into the uh, training courses and modules of MOVE, uh, meaning that uh, we get the expertise of the people who have their hands on the systems and their hands on the applications. Uh, training industry is much more difficult. Uh, these people look at costs and look at benefits. They want to see uh, sort of results from our training activities, which is which is hard to measure. So they love certificates and that's why we are uh, trying to participate in this group here. But it's also more difficult because usually they are not allowed uh, to spend a week with us and then go back and do some testing and everything. So their, their bosses expect them to be productive most of the time. Okay, that was so far and so short, a summary of what HLRS is currently doing. And some of this might be interesting for you. If not, just throw it away. Otherwise, look into the details of these slides. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, are there specific questions for, for Michael? So I, I have a question, Michael. I mean, when I looked at the, sure. I looked at the web pages um, a while ago, I would be really interested to get, of course, the details of the courses. But the last time I looked, I couldn't. Um, you know, find like the learning objectives and the details of all the standard course material that you have. I think this is also a wonderful source, um, would be a wonderful source to kind of look at those materials and kind of synchronize the tree and make sure that the tree is meaningful in that sense. Yeah, probably a very clever system decided that uh, an expert is looking at it and, they, and we were trying to hide everything. No, I'm just kidding. Usually usually uh, for every course there should be an information, uh, but I'm struggling myself now to find uh, the, the courses and the information about the courses. Um, I will forward this to the guys in charge. Let me just quickly check. Like when I look at the courses, uh, July second yeah you're right there is some information but there is not much information about the content uh, especially not in, in in the granularity that you expect um i've only i've only today seen this slide with with sort of this tree where, where you put together things uh we will certainly look into this and, and probably um wait a little bit until it's sort of uh, develops into something more stable uh, and then probably use it and refer to that in, in our information, okay? Oh, sounds great. So here's a question by, from Israel, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. He, he says, how is the economic efficiency and sustainability module structured? Well, that's a good question. Clever guy, yeah. Um, we are working with the university department on economics here and we are working with our own uh, expertise on sustainability. So uh, we will, we will, uh, we're still working on the curriculum, uh, but we will have uh, the, the um, economical issues in that uh, module and we will have technical issues about uh, power consumption, cooling, and usage of the heat that comes out of the system. And uh, I don't have a detailed structure yet. If you're interested in that, just send me an email. And, and once we have the structure finalized, I'll be able to send it to you. All right, great, thank you.